So my research is dedicated to the post-war deportation Zapad, or in English, uh, West. It's uh, the biggest operation of the forced eviction of the local Ukrainian population in the territory of Western Ukraine uh, on October, uh, began on October 21 of uh, 1947. Deportation were actively used by Stalin regime and Soviet secret services uh, as a method of work in order to guarantee the reaches of different aims. The communist regime uh, began uh, to use the deportation before the creation of Soviet Union. Uh, since the uh, 20s, deportation were used at first uh, by class indication against so-called uh, enemy elements. In the 30s, to the class indication was added also uh, uh, the ethnical one. During World uh, War II, deportation began to be used uh, also as a method of struggling against uh, so-called uh, traitor nations, for example, Crimean Tatars, Kalmyks, or others, uh, white anti-communists in the ground, uh, and as one of elements uh, to providing the accelerated Sovietization of new uh, territory, in particular is the Western Ukraine. Chronologically, deportation Zapad was the first uh, after war mass operation realized by Soviet secret services in order to fight against the anti-communist underground movement. Compared to the following uh, deportation operation as Vesna, it's uh, Lithuania uh, 1948 uh, against families of uh, Forest Brothers. Priboy, it's uh, operation in Baltic States uh, in the next years is uh, 49 uh, against Kulaks or Yuk. It happens in Moldova in July of uh, 49. Uh, operation Zapad is a little re researched. There is uh, particularly no special research to Operation Zapad in most monographs and articles as regards to the deportation in after the uh, war periods. Operation of forced evictions of October 47 is anyhow mentioned. The researcher of deportation didn't reach the analytical level uh, and most of them uh, are performed in a descriptive manner. At the same time, the disclosure of uh, KGB archives in Ukraine gives uh, us the opportunity to provide an analysis of this deportation operation and try to give the answer on a range of research issue. Uh, so, <coughs> sorry. The research issue, first of all, uh, I started on the verification of the hypothesis. They are already, uh, already used in the historiography. The rise of the deportation operation is one of the most important issue. Realization in uh, 47 of two mass operation on uh, of forced evictions of Ukrainian population from the east part of Polish uh, People's Republic, it's Operation Wisla, and from western part of uh, Soviet Ukraine, Operation Zapad, raised a logical issue if this operation were connected uh, which uh, each others, and if so, uh, then how. The unique of the uh, typical nature of Operation Zapad and uh, also its inclusion into wider context of deportation practices of Soviet power on the territory of Western Ukraine is the next important uh, issue that is inseparably uh, connected with the previous one. The main goal, uh, uh, the main goal is determined by the Soviet secret services during the realization of Operation Zapad and they are focused on as the groups in the next important issue. If we realize the deportation, uh, we are realized in order to strengthen the collectivization, or else the main goal was the counter insurgency. This is only the range of research issues raised uh, in my research. Of course, they don't cover all the complex of problematic issues. The continuing of working with the KGB records, with, uh, I hope, will leave, uh, provide more complex analysis of uh, this operation, uh, Operation Zapad. Uh, so, uh, when we try to analyze all deportation what happened uh, in uh, Western Ukraine. We must start from September 30, 1939. Due to the Pact of Molotov-Ribbentrop, the Soviet army crossed the border with Poland and after not numerous fights uh, occupied Western Ukraine and Western Belarus. The Swedishization of newly annexed territories expected among, uh, among others the struggles against so-called counter-revolutionary elements. One of the methods of if uh, neutralization became the deportation. Deportations from the territory of Western Ukraine uh, lasted from uh, 1940 to, uh, till 1952. My research examines uh, only those forced eviction that were used as an uh, instrument of repression. The facts in uh, that so for Stalin era of that period, mass resettlements uh, of uh, forced resettlements of population inspired by Soviet regime were 
very pretty typical instrument of social engineering. My research is uh, also focused on deportation that we are realized only on the territory of Western Ukraine or else the Western Ukraine was separately emphasized region where repressions planned to be realized uh, through the forced evictions. So uh, you can see in, in the slide that during two years, 40 and 41, they were deported more than 200,000 of people and during the next uh, periods from uh, 44 to 52, they were deported uh, more 200,000 people uh, also. The key groups of the deported, we are all those who we are subjected to so-called counter-revolutionary or anti-Soviet elements by the Soviet Union. The local polit political, civic and regional elites, uh, businessmen, Polish colonists, wealthy peasantry, refuge refugees from Nazi occupied territories, and generally so-called Ukrainians, Poles and Jewish nationalists. During that 10 years, it was realized on the territory of Western Ukraine, seven deportation operation and one long-term deportation campaign of Ukrainians who supported the anti-Soviet resistance movements. This campaign lasted with a breakup for uh, the Nazi occupation for nine years. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, in, in the slide, uh, what you see is the components of uh, this long-term deportation campaign against uh, own families, it's mentioned uh, it's a term what used by the Czechists uh, from 40s to 50s. Uh, these uh, components of this long-term uh, campaign are bold. After the cleanup of Western Ukraine from so-called Polish counter-revolutionary elements by two deportation operations in uh, 1940, communist secret service began more and more ac actively struggling against Ukrainian organizations and parties. One of the key enemies of NKVD becomes the organization of Ukrainian nationalists. <coughs> During the first half of uh, 1941, intensifies the work of Soviet services against so-called illegals and active members of uh, OUN. In the second half of April uh, 41, the leadership of NKVD of Soviet Ukraine asked a permission from Moscow, except of arrested operation of OUN members, also clean up the base of OUN. It's also the terms from the Czechist documents. That means families of illegals, kulaks, and uh, repressive peoples. This operation began at uh, 4 a.m. at May uh, 20, uh, <coughs> 22nd in 1941 and finished, and finished on uh, that day. In the reference of NKVD about the result of operation, it was mentioned that the usage of deportational supports surrounding with a confession of active uh, insurgent. So far, the on deportation we are to be used in permanent activity. That's why finding the eviction of own families continued till uh, the beginning of Soviet Nazi war in June uh, 41. The beginning of this war was uh, war broke up uh, the deportation activity of communist regime on the territory of Western Ukraine. The next period of repression realization in the uh, form of deportation comes in fact to the period of coming uh, through the Western Ukraine front. <coughs> Sorry for my neck. <coughs> at the time when still lasted fights for the territory of Western Ukraine between Red Army and, Wehr and Wehrmacht on March 31st, uh, 1944, and KVD of Soviet Union issued the Directive Number 122. Due to that direction began the campaign of forced eviction of families of Ukrainian underground members and supporters of Ukrainian liberation movement. In the result of this deportation campaign from 44 to 46, we evicted uh, more than 14,000 families or more than 36,000 persons. Comparing year by year, by year, year campaign, the result of forced evictions in 1946 were less cold than the previous two. Despite the slowing down of the terms of deportation, the leadership of Rep Republican and Union Soviet Secret Services in the letter to Ministry of State Security of uh, Soviet Union positively rates the result of using the forced deportation of your own families. In the letter from uh, 24 May uh, 1947, the Deputy Minister of State Security of Soviet Union, Ogulsov, and Ministry of, of State Security of Soviet Ukraine, Savchenko, uh, <coughs> mentioned, uh, start citation, uh, the eviction of families of own members and bandits, as showed the experience was pretty effective methods of struggle against the uh, own underground, and citation. In the same letter, both generals asked a permission to continue the usage of deportation in 1947. In, in historiography, in present historiography, this letter is cons considered to be a ground for the beginning of the operations, uh, <coughs> Operation Zapad. Uh, 
at 2 a.m. Uh, of 21 uh, October 1947 in Lviv began the mass deportation operation of Ukrainians from the territory of Western Ukraine under the god code name Zapad. And this operation was planned to be realized during uh, one day, but was delayed for several days because uh, of the bad weather in Carpathian Mountains. During six days from the Volin, Drohobych, Shirviv, Rivne, Stanislaviv, President Ivano Frankivsk, uh, Ternopil, and Chernivtsi regions were deported to Siberia and Kazakhstan, more than uh, 26,000 uh, families, or more than 77 persons. <coughs> Quarter of them were men. It's more than... Uh, 18, uh, 18, uh, perso 18,000 of persons, the rest were women and uh, children un under 15 uh, years old. Despite the fact that uh, the realization of Operation Zapad uh, result is reducing, uh, reducing of support of Ukrainian anti-Soviet insurgent movement, they weren't successful in uh, completely liquidation. Eviction of families as a method of struggles against Ukrainian underground was decided to be continued. On the order about Operation Zapad, there was a pencil writing next order under uh, 00386 issued issued by MGB of Soviet Ukraine from October 10th, uh, 1948. And maybe you can see this uh, page with uh, this pencil right uh, number of the next one order. Uh, deportation of Ukrainian population from the territory of Western Ukraine due to the, this order had to be realized in the format of everyday work and in response to the activity of Ukrainian insurgents. Deportation of uh, own members' families during uh, 1988 to till 1952 were realized on the basis of special created assembly points. Uh, so, <coughs> the analysis of Soviet deportation practices revealed in the, a certain feature of uh, Operation Zapad. It uh, took place almost in the middle of uh, a long-term deportation campaign. It is a legitimate question what gives the impetus to the change Soviet uh, deportational uh, policy in 1947. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, that discussion if the Operation Whistler uh, had influence on the realization of, oh, it's only middle of my presentation. So I maybe try, okay, <laughs> I, I try to maybe sh more shortly. So uh, <coughs> it's main, one of the main questions if uh, Operation uh, Zapad uh, organized and started in the uh, experience of Operation Wisla. Uh, the Polish researcher R Richard Tozetsky uh, supposed that the decision about the realization of Operation Wisla was taken in Moscow in February 47, but, uh, and uh, General Savchenko, you can see this photo of them, who uh, will be one of chief of Operation Zapad, was involved in the planning of Operation Wisla, but unfortunately, we cannot find any archival uh, records to, uh, to, to support this uh, version. Uh, but what is important to mention that the first draft code name of Operation Wisla was Wschud or East in the Polish. Uh, in, in the Polish. So the questions uh, if both deportations were planned in one center, uh, for example, Moscow, or still uh, all that forced eviction were planned and realized independently, one of another is quite natural. Uh, if uh, I try to find some documents in our archives regarding to Operation Whistler, the first mention it's a document from the 20 April of uh, 1947. It's a message from Intelligence Department to the Chief of uh, Kiev Office uh, of NKVD about uh, Pol Polish plans uh, organize this, uh, this campaign. Uh, so, and uh, if we analyze uh, regulatory acts of Soviet serv special services uh, from, from other uh, hand and show the dynamics of deportation activity, my uh, hypothesis that when we uh, analyze the times of appearance of a lot of directives, regulation regarding to the deportational uh, activity, it's of course uh, correction, uh, <coughs> correlate with the uh, 
deportation campaign in Soviet Ukraine. And if we look to these uh, mentions, different regulatory acts, we see the gap between uh, November of uh, 1946 and the uh, May of uh, 1947. So the first uh, and first normative acts what uh, was issued <coughs> in the May of 1947, it's di Directive Number 50, signed by Savchenko, what I mentioned, of course. And, <coughs> and this uh, directive was issued in half of months after the beginning of the Operation Whistler, and particularly at the same time with the end of the uh, f finished or first stage of Operation Whistler. And if we to agree with opinions of some historians uh, that Operation Whistler began or uh, in draft name Schut, uh, East began early, then it was planned, then uh, one may suppose that the hypothesis about interconnection between two deportation may be right. And the issue that, uh, and the issue of the directive number 50 was a try to catch up with the launch of deportation operation in Poland and at least on, uh, on the level of uh, Soviet Ukraine. So unfortunately, <laughs> we, uh, setting, okay, <coughs> I think that, uh, uh, so I try to uh, to uh, maybe okay maybe short. Uh, okay, when we analyze uh, the main point of all these uh, regulatory acts, we will see that uh, main point when uh, Soviet secret services uh, used uh, this uh, instrument of deportation is a struggle against the uh, Ukrainian insurgent movement. Uh, only in one uh, directive, it's number 80, uh, issued in August uh, 1947, the deportation mentions uh, together with the question of collected of corn and collectivization. But in my opinion, it's not, uh, it's maybe uh, more tell uh, us about the uh, attitudes of chief of Ukrainian, uh, level and uh, Soviet Union level chiefs of the secret services to uh, realize the deportation operation that uh, talk uh, us about uh, the that the uh, strength and uh, this collectivization its main aim, aim of uh, the deportation all of these uh, regulatory acts mentioned that uh, Czechists must use the deportation when they fight against the Ukra Ukrainian nationalists. Okay, maybe in this I stopped and uh, in this question and answers, it's we more talk about other uh, research issues. Absolutely, thank you so much.